Hello everybody and welcome Hello. back again to Let's Play Horizon Zero Dawn. So I'm starting today's episode here in Meridian because I have a bunch of stuff to hand over. I've been playing off camera for a while and I was able to pick up almost all the collectibles. I have all the mugs, I have all the Banuk figures and yes I even have all the metal flowers including this one that didn't show up on my map at first so I consulted Google to find out where to look for it and as it turns out um, it's all the way back in that uh, metal world ruin that Aloy fell into as a child this one over here interestingly enough the metal flower does show up on the map when you're close to the ruins but not when you're like somewhere else for some reason so that's kind of strange and the reason why you couldn't get the metal flower as a child is because it's in a part of the ruins that is blocked by stalactites and you need your spear to destroy them and then you can enter and pick up the flower and while i was doing that i found another uh, one of these power cells for the ancient armory quest not that it helps me much because i need three power cells for that quest but hey at least i have one more so I can hand over all these artifacts and uh, receive my reward. Now you may notice that I'm still missing one vantage point. I actually was trying to get this one too. Um, it's all the way up here in the northern part of this little uh, valley. But um, when I came to this campfire I noticed that this place seemed to be kind of special or significant. There were a lot of like old world ruins and uh, scraps lying around. And Aloy made like a remark about watchers and stalkers being up here, which seemed unusual. So I figured this actually might be part of a later quest. And even if it isn't, um, maybe I should be doing this part on camera because the whole place seemed significant just because there was so much um, metal wall stuff lying around. So I will be doing this later and uh, pick up the remaining vantage point. But yeah, um, let's find all the traders and let's hand over um, the stuff. I think I haven't actually turned over Oz all the mugs yet. So maybe I'm going to start with that. And I don't think I've actually turned in any Barnook figures or metal flowers. Hmm, yes. I remember you. Did you find the vessels I seek? Um, yes. I have all of them now. Yes, yes. Trade quickly. I have work to do. Okay. I guess this is the one box that I haven't uh, gotten yet. And now I have it. All right. Thank you for your trade. I will leave you to the hunt. Be sure to delve into the ruins. Rugged? Well traveled? Yes. <laughs> I would like to talk to you. I have collected all the mugs that I can find. Now, let's see. Flower collectibles. I guess this must be the person who's interested in metal flowers, huh? I'm honestly not sure if... I ever talked to him before. I may not have done that because I didn't have a full set of metal flowers yet. So this might be interesting. Let's have a chat. Yes, a colorful discussion. Let's have a chat. What did you want to talk about? You were an outlander, no? An adventurer. I used to be one myself. <laughs> did you get an I arrow admit, to the knee? I miss the beguiling colors of the wilds. Speaking of which, I wonder if you've come across a very special kind mm -hmm. of flower. It's made of metal, like a machine. Other blossoms grow around them in amazing patterns. These gleaming beauties are very much in demand among my clients. If you bring me some, I have valuables to trade for them. Yeah, I never talked to this guy before, but now I can hand over all the flowers at once. Isn't that great? Um, but yeah, let's uh, talk a little bit about yourself, maybe. You said you were an adventurer. Just so. The nobles of Meridian crave flowers for their balconies and gardens. So out I went, 
with bow and spear. I made my name by searching the wilds for the wildest blossoms. No bandit nor machine could keep me from those precious petals. So what happened? Love happened, my sweet. <laughs> my paramour frets too much when I venture out. So now I collect flowers for those without such bonds. Is it worth it? Being restrained like that? Of course. Freedom is sweet. But the embrace of my beautiful Theridine is sweeter still. <laughs> Okay, well, um, I can respect that, I suppose. But yeah, what do you know about these metal flowers? These metal flowers? What are they exactly? No one knows. But some say they began sprouting 20 years ago when the machines started to go mad. Hmm. Huh. Perhaps they grow from the tears of the sun. <laughs> for he has many faces, does he not? Wrathful one day, cool and patient the next? Perhaps he weeps for our suffering when his anger breaks. I'm not sure what the metal flowers are, but I'm pretty sure they are not the tears of the sun. But whatever, I have quite a few of them. Ah, let us haggle over this beautiful bounty. Alright, so I can get all the boxes, because I have all the flowers. There we go. And I guess that's it. Till we meet again. My noble Nora. <laughs> Everyone needs a splash of color in their lives. Well, at least Come, he's very polite. Let's talk it over. Um, I will have a look at all my uh, boxes later. Um, eclectic collectibles? Artifact collectibles. I guess this is the one who is collecting the Banu figures, right? So let's talk to that one as well. Back from the wilds. Find any Banuke relics? Indeed, I have quite a few. You ready? Let's trade then. Um, okay, Apani, I picked up box one already, but now I can get the other two as well. And there we go. Come on back if you find any Banuke goods. I pay well for well, I'm pretty sure relics, Outlander. I have found all that exists. At least in this part of the world. So, um, let's have a look at all the boxes we got. Um, I mean, I guess I will open these as well. As long as there's stuff inside that I can actually use. Of course, this is going to uh, fill up my inventory again. Which I just cleaned out, by the way. So I may have to go and sell some stuff again. Okay, now we're getting to the interesting stuff. Okay. <laughs> There's boxes within boxes. Weapon coil. Okay. Nothing too special so far. Ooh, 1000 metal shards. I won't be able to put all these modifications into my inventory, I'm pretty sure. So I guess I'll leave them in their box for now until I actually need them. Okay. Yeah, they're all modifications. I mean, at the moment, I don't really need any of them. And since I don't have that much space in my inventory, I guess I'm going to keep them in their boxes. <laughs> Anyway, um, I guess I will talk to another trader, you know, one that's actually selling normal stuff. Um, right. I, I just want to get rid of some resources and then we will continue with our main mission, which means we're going back to Sunfall. But first, let me make sure that my inventory is not entirely full before I leave again. All right, I have returned to Sunfall, and now I need to find what are you the waiting around Grand for, Balcony. Outlander? Bounties are announced inside. <laughs> and yeah, I hope we will finally find out what Project Zero Dawn is. I mean, that's what this is all about, right? Okay.
This looks like it's this insane. How do we expect to win a war? Trade. It's a short drop from there. Okay. Well, let's do it. No one seems to mind that I'm here. There's some very convenient little rocks. Let's do it. Um, no, I gotta go even further down. The other side of the tower. Look for a vent. A vent, you say, huh? Alright, let's look around a little bit. Well, it's not this way, apparently. I gotta go through here. I, I see. see it's been here before. Obviously. No. It's very important that you hear what I'm about <laughs> to say. I've shown you the way in, but this humble vent marks a point of no return. Before you descend into the depths here, you should be fully committed, equipped, and focused. No distractions. If you have errands to run, do them first or hold your <laughs> peace. I won't tolerate whining. Is that clear? Okay. You'll tolerate what I give you, Silence. I didn't ask you along for the ride. Well, I'm pretty sure I don't really have anything to do at this point. Um, as you can see, side missions, yes, the ancient armory, but I need more power cells and that's just a DLC. No more errands, bandit camps, tall necks, hunting grounds, all finished. I mean, they still show up as active, but as you can see, I have uh, received all the blazing suns. I got all the cauldrons, all the corrupted zones. And I, I could do some of the tutorials, but um, I don't really need to. So, yeah, I think, I, I think I'm good to go. Let's, let's do it. I'm heading down. I've spent a lifetime trying to uncover the secrets of this world. Where the machines came from. How the old ones achieved such marvels only to fall into silence and death. A lifetime of failure. As year by year, decade after decade, I hit walls I could not break, doors I could never breach. Hello. Until a Nora Huntress marched out of the Savage East. And voila. Well, lucky her, you. All the deepest secrets of the earth were laid bare. I suspect you will have an easier time with this door than I did years ago. Hold for identiscan. Mm-hmm. Unless it's corrupted as well. Genetic profile confirmed. Entry authorized. Malfunction. 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 Me? You don't hear me laughing. Shut up. There's gotta be another way. Hey! Elizabeth Sobek here! Requesting access! <laughs> access request acknowledged. Root command functions huh. available. Do you wish to proceed? I do! Get me through this door! Analyzing. Primary access inoperable due to mechanical failure. Emergency venting procedure likely to circumvent blockage. Do you wish to proceed? Yes. Emergency venting authorized. Alright, you did it. <laughs> I underestimated you. See, by now I. Huh. Well, that got someone's attention, though. Guess you can't have everything. That will draw attention. We won't have this place to ourselves for long now. We? Last I checked, I was <laughs> the one risking my life down here. Yes, fine. Now, will you please get moving? There's so much to learn in less time than I'd hoped. Right. So I gotta be careful. Some people might try to find me here. Um, I definitely need to fill up my arrows for this one. I mean, usually these ruins were pretty safe. No humans and at worst a few machines, but... 
rarely any humans. Welcome to Project Zero Dawn. Zero Dawn. We found it. Okay. Are you really so surprised? Facility diagnostics detect multiple failures. Attempting repair. So, what was this room? An entrance hall, perhaps. Have a look around. Yes, let's see some data pad over here. Another incident. I will have a look at that. From lounge staff to admin subject, another incident. This morning's unfortunate incident with Dr. Popovich is another example of reception's need for additional support. We appreciate that Zero Dawn is an immensely complicated project, but as a staff who serve on the front line, we're tired of being neglected. As we have already requested, we need human translators fluent in Polish, for example. Secure security staff who can subdue enraged embryo embryologists for example, and dermal sedatives to calm persons who are screaming in Polish while hurling chairs and vases at reception staff, for example. <laughs> yes, most of the candidates are reasonably calm and well behaved, but we need help handling the exceptions that, to that rule. Please respond. Yeah, I remember Dr. Sobek talking about candidates. So, she has been like collecting people from all around the world for this project, apparently including embryologist so I guess maybe there was cloning involved in whatever was going on here I mean that would explain Aloy I suppose we need support too okay. <laughs> let's have a look at that well from reception staff to admin we need support too. Reception staff continues to require additional support managing ZD candidates when they arrive at the facility. Many are frightened or confused. Some are highly agitated. These are not the sort of persons who are accustomed to having information withheld from them. At minimum, we need human translators. The long bots are not sufficient. The lang bots are not sufficient, and mild sedatives for the extreme cases. Any and all support would be welcome. Perhaps we could start by responding to one of these mails. <laughs> okay, apparently there was a lot of stuff going on with these candidates that they brought in here. Hmm, fascinating. All right, what do we got here? Please take a seat and wait for your name to be called. A selection of beverages and snacks are available. A smaller room. <laughs> so I guess this is where the candidates had to wait for whatever. Soundproofing. From lounge staff to admin soundproofing, would it be possible to improve the soundproofing between VR1 and the lounge area? Most of the candidates stay quiet during the presentation, but the ones who scream or sob can be plainly heard by candidates waiting their turn in the lounge. Just a thought. Okay, so the candidates were shown something and they were not happy about it. Hmm, okay, interesting. Uh, let's see, I think I saw another data pad on my compass. Restock or else? Again, from lounge staff to admin. For the fifth time, please restock the lounge's selection of herbal teas. If I have to listen to one more egghead throw a tantrum because we are out of the organic cucumber mint or blackberry sage var varietals, I'm going to lose it. Please respond and this time no tempest in a teapot or steep demand jokes, okay? <laughs> Alright, so they had to accommodate the candidates here and apparently they were quite demanding. Okay, I'm not seeing any more data points on my compass. Let's have a look at the door. 
please proceed into viewing room one for an important message regarding the purpose of your visit. Okay, I hope I can see this message. I can't wait to see it. What? What was this place? A holographic theater. CD01 data intact. Initiating playback. Okay, here we go. This is going to be good. Welcome after. to Project Zero Dawn. I am General Harris, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the United States of America. I'm sure you've heard the rumors that Zero Dawn is a top secret super weapons program, the technological miracle that will save us from the Pharaoh Plague if Operation Enduring Victory can hold off the robots long enough. The reason I'm sure you've heard the rumors is that I'm the one who spread them, and they are all lies. Zero Dawn is not a super weapons I program. I kind of expected that. And it will not save us. Nothing will save us. And here's why. By the time the glitch was noticed, it was already too late. Nothing could stop the Pharaoh Plague. Nothing can. Its robots will continue to replicate and devour the biosphere. Life on Earth will be destroyed. Our planet reduced to a barren sphere. Global extinction is inevitable. No matter how many we kill, the robots just keep exponentially mm -hmm. making more. If we had their deactivation codes, we could shut them all down. The entire swarm. But since their cryptographic protocols use polyphasic entangled waveforms, cracking a code set would take half a century. Great. At best, we've got 16 months. Not exactly what you'd call a survival option. The destruction of a biosphere is not the sort of apocalypse you can wait out in a fallout shelter or a space station. There will be no Earth left to reclaim. Just a lifeless, toxic rock with several million pharaoh robots on it, hibernating. Waiting for something to eat. This is the horrible truth behind the lies of Operation Enduring Victory. My lies. Lies designed to inspire millions of innocents to sacrifice themselves in battle. Why? One reason. To buy time for you and the work you will do here. Zero day. The day that life on Earth ceases to exist is coming fast. It cannot be stopped. The hope of zero dawn is that something new might come after. But I will leave it to Elizabeth Sobek to shine that thin ray of light into the darkness. Harris, out. Okay, so I guess some kind of cloning is involved. They're not saving humans, they're just preparing like a new race of humans for later. That makes sense. Life on Earth didn't cease to exist. He said it could not be stopped. But it was. Somehow... Somehow Elizabeth saved us. I've, I've got to keep looking. Find out how she did it. Yeah, I guess maybe they brought in all the candidates because they wanted to clone them and then to, I don't know, wake them up when it was safe to go out again. Of course, they also had to, like, um, make sure that the plant life is still intact and so on. So clearly the Faro robots didn't eat all of it or somehow they managed to regrow it again. Well, let's continue and see what we can find. Ooh, there's a lot of stuff here. They got in through the vents. Let nothing stop you from learning the truth. Spread out! If it moves, kill it! What is this place? A tomb? I guess I have to take care of these guys first before I can look at all the data pads in here. Um, I'm guessing this is glass and I can't shoot through it, huh? All right, we got one guy over here. There we go. It's one of them down. I 
I guess your friends are inside here, huh? Well, not inside this room. There you go. <laughs> right. You are dead. Good. We're too dead. close to a tribal primitive stop us now. The data points, what did they contain? I didn't have the time to look at them. But I will now. Okay, let's have a look. Counselor guidelines. For debriefing after presentation one, candidates must be allowed to ask questions and be given the necessary time to fully absorb the information they have received. It is important to be aware that candidates have just been exposed to triggers for severe mental and emotional trauma. Do not assume silence or outward calmness indicates acceptance. It is essential to stress that all other options for combating the Faro Plague and preserving the continuation of human life have been considered and found unworkable. Communicate this fact calmly but clearly and firmly. Familiarize yourself with data on the catastrophic environmental impact of nuclear engagements versus a swarm, addendum B1, and unfeasibility of maintaining life in orbital, lunar or undersea structures. Addenda C1, C2, C3, so that you can counter candidates' objections in depth. Okay, so they didn't just build shelters and try to wait until the machines had eaten everything. I mean, that's, that's the problem. Even if they ate the entire biosphere, the machines would just still be there. So something must have happened to them, right? If a candidate asks for time alone to review supplementary information, allow this without hesitation. Be sure to inform security personnel so the candidate can be monitored for attempts at self-harm. Candidates should only be cleared to proceed to presentation 2 if you believe their mental state is sufficiently stable. Note that real-time support will be available via your focus. Security and medical crisis teams are data corrupted. Okay, so I need to see presentation two. I'm sure that's going to answer some of my questions. Interview Suzanne Alpert. For debriefing after presentation one. No, that's the one I just read. Where's the one that I just found? Uh, okay, this one. Oh, this actually has some audio. ...with Suzanne Alpert, environmental scientist. Doctor? I'm sorry, I wasn't... Uh... Just stating your name. What were you thinking about, Doctor? Nothing the General said, not really. I was on the Syzygy East response team in 2051, just after the second earthquake compromised the reactor. I still dream about it, after all these years. The red zone spreading on the imaging slowly, so slowly, like a hand opening its fingers. Your involvement in that event is why you were asked for by name. Really? That's interesting. Because nothing worked. Nothing could grow there again. It was a catastrophic failure. But the red zone is a blip compared to global scale biomass reduction. The biosphere and hydrosphere will collapse, render the Earth uninhabitable long before the robots finish us. Enduring victory can't buy time against that. So, you'd better show me what Zero Dawn really is. Is she supposed to be German or something like that? It sounds like some stereotypical German accent anyway. <laughs> okay, well, that doesn't really tell me much about Zero Dawn though. Anyway, let's keep on looking. We have another data point over here. Should have brought a cart. Nope, I won't be needing this. Interview Captain Oculo. I'm sure you now understand the urgency of why we brought you here, Ms. Oculo. Captain Oculo, are you trying to thank me for not resisting? <laughs> I believe we couldn't negotiate a diplomatic solution. When it came to my country's lithium, it was always a swarm that would be sent to negotiate. Metallurgic International, US Robot Command. The markings changed, but the robots were the same. 
You have had considerable experience in human-robot conflict. Yes, and I've got the prosthetic limbs to show it. Yet I continue to face this horror, even though the challenge was great. Cyber warfare. I thought Zero Dawn would be a, a Manhattan project to generate the deactivation codes. With the resources I had, I estimated code breaking to be a hopeless endeavor. I was almost looking forward to being proved wrong. Unfortunately, your estimation was correct. As your General Hera said. So then, you did not bring me here to commiserate. What is left? Yeah, that's what I would like to know. Apparently all the candidates had basically the same questions. Another interview. Look, uh, let's cut the mystery. You're building a colony ship. It's obvious. <laughs> and it's not going to fly. I mean, literally. Remember the Odyssey? That multinational heap of space junk that's been in graveyard orbit since 57? That went nowhere real slow. And you have to get somewhere real fast. Uh, do you have any idea the immensity of the challenge to prep a new colony ship in time? To be clear, I'm not a worker on the project. Do you even understand how few people it could save? The whole generation ship concept is, is not gonna happen. It's the first thing you'd abandon in favor of embryonics. Uh, for that kind of storage we're talking, a lot of bulk, a lot of power, a lot of resources. So even if you do it, even if you build it and point it at Sirius X, there's no room for people on that thing, all right? If you could try to remain calm. But you people are crazy if you think you're getting off this rock. No one's getting off. Medical. Well, building a spaceship apparently was not the plan anyway, so he's right about that. It's not what they uh, were doing. Um, anyway, I'm pretty sure... There are more data pads around. Okay, another interview. You previously worked for Faro Automated Systems. On the chariot line self-replication routines? I came here thinking this was a, a rendition. When your people took me, I, I thought, about time. I've been trying to swallow the guilt every day since... Since, uh... Would you like to take a moment? No, 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 I, I just... I really hoped Zero Dawn was a way to undo it all. My work. And I'm sorry to say I was ever proud of it, but tech could really sell a concept. And, and, and in the labs, in the, the, the light of creation, that first test run, when, when you saw they understood their own structures, could rebuild themselves from memory and light, there were no limits. God, there were no limits. <laughs> Interesting. So they could just definitely build more machines, of course. And another one. It is accurate, yes. So these mechanical monstrosities, they don't just kill people. They feed off them? Not just people. All organic matter. Every living thing dissolved into nutrients millennia of evolution liquefied the miracle of life reduced to bloody biofuel in a word <laughs> yes who did this pharaoh that asshole is he here no doctor please tell him tom pike wants a word now get off get off Doctor, please, you get Ted Pharaoh in here. <laughs> well, he's not taking it well. Kind of understandable, though. Um. Anyway, I think I saw some data pets in this room as well. Oh, it's actually the one where I just came from. Okay, well, in that case, I think I actually found all the data pets. But... What is this over here? Is this going anywhere? <laughs> um, I am not sure if it is. It might be just like a sneaky way to get into that room. Yeah, I think that's what it is. 
Okay, well, in that case, um, let's just move on. Got a door over here. And this is just where it came from, right? Let's do it. CD02 data intact. Initiating playback. Elizabeth Sobeck. You've heard the bad news, and it's all true. The Pharaoh Plague is devouring the biosphere. Life itself will cease to exist. But does that have to be the end? What if we could give life a future? What if we could build a kind of seed from which, on a dead planet, life could blossom anew? This is the aim, the hope, of Project Zero Dawn. To create a super intelligent, fully automated terraforming system and bring life back from lifelessness. What would such a system require? At its core, it would need a true AI, fully capable of making the trillions of decisions necessary to reconstitute the biosphere. An immortal guardian, devoted to the reflourishing of life. We call it Gaia. Hmm. Mother Nature as an AI. But that's just the core of the system. She will need to be surrounded and empowered by a comprehensive suite of subordinate functions. Think of them as extensions of Gaia's mind, each dedicated to a specific purpose. Now these aren't AIs, but make no mistake, each presents an engineering challenge more profound than anything the human species has ever before attempted. Hardware that preserves and then gestates the billions of seeds and embryos from which life will be reborn. The construction of underground facilities to hold it all. And that's just the start. We don't have to build the entire system. The beauty of a fully automated terraforming system Hades. is that it can build itself. Hades is now over the days to come, you'll learn how all these functions, all these pieces that you'll be working on, fit together. How we'll race the clock to execute our harvest initiatives, write the software, build the tech and the facilities. How we'll lock it down and seal it up before the inevitable occurs. But even more important, you'll know how it doesn't end here. How Gaia will generate those deactivation codes General Harris talked about. And build the transmission arrays to broadcast them, shutting down the feral robots for good. How Gaia will not just build, but imagine any conceivable robot it needs to do its work across centuries. From detoxifying the Earth's ravaged atmosphere and poisoned seas, to the regreening of the Earth from cryopreserved seed stalks, to rewilding the Earth with animal life. And then, when all that is done, how a new generation of human beings, spawned at cradle facilities around the globe, will partake of Apollo. The vast archive of human knowledge and cultural achievement from which they will learn of us, our world. And most important, how not to repeat our mistakes. It's not an impossible dream. It is within our grasp if we work tirelessly and stop at nothing to achieve it. We can't stop life from ending. But if you will help me, help Gaia, we can give it a future. Join me and help make that future real. Okay. Wow. That that is the, the solution to all of this. Destroyed. But then remade? Yes. By a machine. A machine of creation. Elizabeth did this for life for us but why Hades then if it was part of Gaia how did it end up in the wreckage of a pharaoh robot and why does it want to kill me and Apollo the archive of knowledge what happened to that I'm as confused hmm. as you are maybe the answers lie ahead Okay, well, I would say 
Sobek's plan worked well, but maybe something went wrong at the end. I mean, apparently they did manage to shut down the Pharaoh robots because it took them like 50 years to generate the shutdown code and then they were able to deactivate them and then start to repopulate um, the planet with plant life and humans and all the machines we usually see are actually there to um, you know rebuild the planet i mean i've been wondering what they've been doing there like some of them were digging in the ground and doing all kinds of stuff and you know what kind of function do they have why were they designed for what particular task i guess i have my answer now but clearly apollo uh, didn't really work because i mean the humans are still living in tribes and they haven't received all this knowledge that was stored for them and I'm not sure about Hades, if Hades is working as intended or if something went wrong in that regard. But yes, we finally got some answers. And as I suspected, Zero Dawn was not like that super weapon to uh, destroy the machines, at least not right away. Um, it, it took a while to actually shut them down. And I guess that would explain why Aloy has like the same DNA as Dr. Sobek because I guess she is a clone because they kind of saved the DNA and used the DNA to repopulate the planet. Of course, it wouldn't explain why Aloy apparently um, came into existence at this point in time because clearly the humans have been on the planet again for quite some time. So they are not clones, I suppose. At best, they are like descendants of clones that you know, were put on the planet a uh, long time ago. But okay, well, that was a very interesting and informative episode. But um, I guess I'm going to make a cut here and we will continue to look around here and maybe we can find out more about this project. And if something went wrong with it and if yes, what can we do to remedy it? But for now, let's call it a day. As always, thank you for watching and see you again next time.